Okay. Hello. So here is my first story time. Da -da 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 -da. First, a shout out to some people. Uh, to somebody that asked a question, my favorite director, Stanley Kubrick. And let's see. And you know who you are. Uh, and since I didn't write down the other questions, I have forgotten. <laughs> Go figure. So, oh, the other question, the hat. Uh, the hat is when my hair looks like crap, and uh, which is all the time, but sometimes it looks less crappy than other times. But that being said, here we go. So, uh, oh, another, another thing I forgot. Um, once in a while, what will happen is um, something will occur to me, and I get the inspiration, and I'm able to stop, stop coughing enough and turn off the air and the fans. Uh, to put together some sort of uh, a video. So that's why we're doing uh, Biola story time. Uh, so let's see. It starts uh, pretty much when I graduated uh, from high school. I was 17. And then uh, so um, there's a lot of uh, stuff that happened before that. Um, I knew I was gay. I was definitely sexually active. Uh, all my friends were going to really cool colleges. Um, um, I didn't have any money. My parents didn't have any money. And uh, I got a full scholarship. Uh, that's a room, board, the whole nine yards to a Christian college. And the college's name was Biola. Biola is in La Mirada, California. Biola stands for Bible Institute of Los Angeles. At that time, they called themselves a college. Today, it's uh, Biola University because that's very much more impressive, I guess, than a college. And so, um, um, that summer, I had a good time, great time. Um, I believe I was working at Knott's Berry Farm, and that's another story time. Um, uh, pretty sure it was uh, Knott's. Uh, between about 1977 and roughly the mid-1984, my, I was pretty wild, so uh, my memories are, I definitely have ideas of where I was, uh, but not necessarily in the correct order. Um, certain events would have to be very uh, solidified for me to figure out where I was in, uh, you know, in my memory. So anytime between 77 and 84, if I don't have a concrete, here's what I was doing at that moment. Uh, the story might not have a a spot exactly in between the, that period, but I know, I know, that I, I was I entered Biola when I was seventeen. So uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, to enter Biola, we had to take something called the MMPI, which, if you don't know, it's a psychological test. Um, it stands for the Minnesota Multi Multifaceted Personality Inventory. So it's a really long, very strange bunch of questions, ranging from uh, do you love your mom to uh, do you ever notice tarry bits in your poop? I mean, it was really bizarre. And so I thought, and it also has a scale that can rate you on uh, whether or not you're being honest. And since I was a pretty honest guy by, by that time, uh, I thought, well, I'll take this test after I'd been given the scholarship. I'll take the test and I'll just throw it out there in the wind. And a couple of the questions were, uh, have you ever thought about having sex with another same sex? And I put yes. And uh, I mean, I just answered all the sexual questions truthfully. Uh, and, um, you know, I didn't get a notice saying, uh, you're not, you're not allowed. So I entered um biola college slash university in the fall of uh 1977 how exciting uh, ancient history to some people not so far back for others anyway uh i just got settled in and the photo that you saw at the very beginning of the intro was me 
walking into the freshman dorm. And yes, that was me. I didn't. Uh, uh, I did a Photoshop a little bit, but uh, that was just to remove a person that was in it that I don't want to talk about right now. Anyway, so I into the dorm, and there is the picture to prove it. And if you know Biola, you might even recognize the front of the dorm. Uh, the freshman dorm was just uh, all males. The female side was uh, the female dorms were way on the other side of campus because. Of course, we had to pre be protected as young sexual 17 to 18-year-olds entering college from the temptation, of course, of, uh, of uh, you know, girls. Uh, so soon after I entered, I was called. To, uh, we had like a week to settle in. Uh, I had a, a nice roommate, although I was a little disappointed because I was really into looks, even though I wasn't a great looker. And my roommate was named Paul, and he was a very, very nice guy, but I was hoping for uh, basically the equivalent of uh, a young Brad Pitt, and he was not that. So soon after I entered, uh, during that week, I was called to the counselor's office, <laughs> or a counselor's office. This was a psychologist. His name was Ernie. Really nice guy, uh, really you know, pleasant to talk to. And so and he asked me about uh, my test. Uh, and I and he said, and you know, this test kind of showed a couple of things. And being a psychologist, you know, he didn't say exactly what, but uh, he said that it's it first off, I told you extremely truthful, which is really good. And I, I thought, yes, it is. That's how you do things. But, uh, and then he said it. It also uh, kind of showed a tendency um, uh, to towards homosexuality. And I said. Well, yes, and he, he, yeah, and I thought, well, this is it, you know, I'm going to be kicked out right now, and he said, okay, would you like to talk about that, and I said, sure, and so he set up a weekly, a weekly counseling session for me, uh, and then I started into uh, my first semester at Biola, now, hold on just a second, this is bad here, <coughs> oh, sorry, anyway, Try not to do that. I'm talking a lot, and I always have to have uh, this close. Uh, but I hate it. I hate the way it looks. That's the oxygen. So anyway, and it's starting to get a little warm for me. Believe it or not, it's above 65 in here. Okay. So um, as you can guess, this storm was filled with many, many. It was I think two stories. Many, many um, young people from all over the country. And had grown up very evangelical Christian. And uh, we had a couple of choices. This was a very conservative college, uh, much like Wheaton, but um, less prestigious, less known, but very, very conservative. And so these kids usually, along with me, came from a very uh, conservative churches, didn't know much about sex, but were 17 or 18. So, you know what that means with a bunch of guys. And I proceeded to make a lot of really good friends. Because I was sexually active, and I thought, this is wonderful, all these guys, and we had uh, common showers, which has never been a problem for me. I mean, I don't, you know, I just, I shower, and they, they shower, which is fine. But I started, I had a good thing, uh, a good gaydar. <laughs> With gaydar doesn't mean you can spot somebody that's necessarily gay, but it's like, Boy, we're all 17 or 18 year old guys, and one thing leads to another, and one thing led to another with a guy named Terry, who was a freshman. One thing led to another with a, a guy named uh, Robert, who was an upperclassman. One thing led to another with uh, a few other a few other guys. Uh, I, I could think of maybe two or three, but I don't remember their names. Um, and that was in the first semester. But, Robert. Now, Robert was special. His name uh, was uh, Robert Francisco Mocada. And uh, I thought he was just God's gift to me. And we kind of became boyfriends. So, my parents lived in Orange County. And this was in La Mirada, which was L.A. County, the school. So, I mean, I was out. Uh, and uh, I wasn't going to go home for... Uh, Christmas vacation, 
And uh, since Robert and I were boyfriends, and most of the kids went home because they were homesick, and Robert wasn't, and I wasn't, so we had a wonderful two-week love affair in the uh, freshman dorms at Biola. So, um, uh, back to my roommate Paul. Now, Paul had been... He had a dorm room, and it was uh, two beds on either side of a bookcase and shelving and a closet thing. I had been bringing a lot of me, these guys uh, back to my dorm room, and uh, Paul was either very, 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 very hard, um, deep sleeper or didn't care or a combination of both. I don't know, but uh, not, we were not raucously having sex, but... I thought, you know, maybe, and I don't know how I wrangled this, but maybe, uh, maybe I will, uh, you know, ask Paul to trade with somebody else. And I found another upperclassman who was in a different dormitory on campus, and his name, and I will never forget this, was Zane. Yeah, Zane. Anyway, he was probably the most flamboyant man on campus. And I had asked him, and he agreed to be my roommate. So we basically spent um, the time right at the very end of uh, uh, the Christmas break redecorating our dorm room, uh, which was not approved because we moved the bookcase shelving closet to one side of the room, and we had found that the two single beds made bunk beds so <laughs> we, we decorated we had plaids and we had some amazing fun things and uh it looked really good we had chairs and we didn't have that and we had our bunk beds he was on the top bunk, bunk bed and i was on the bottom and i thought this is just wonderful so i don't know if it was the first night i can't really remember the second night i don't know but um we had, um, we were just going to sleep, and we were chatting, and he was a chatty kind of guy like me. And uh, I mentioned to Zane, I said, you know, I am gay. Anyway, Zane freaked, <laughs> freaked out uh, after all the decorating. Uh, uh, I guess Zane either wasn't gay, or he was uh, not out gay, or... Anyway, he ran out of the room, and I never saw Zane again. Anyway, he ran to the RA, which was the resident assistant's room, and I thought, what's going on? Uh, anyway, the next day, Zane never came back, by the way. So, uh, my gaydar worked, maybe, maybe not, but anyway, uh, <laughs> um, very flamboyant Zane, I never saw again. Uh, but next day, uh, I was a little concerned about this, <laughs> as you might think. And I don't remember a whole lot of the night. The next day, I was called to the dean of men's office by Yari. Came down and said, "You need to go see the dean of men." And and uh, I knew that does that wasn't that didn't sound good. So <laughs> anyway, I went to the dean of men's office, and he was. Uh, I don't know, an old guy, maybe 40. <laughs> was, I don't remember. I know he was smaller than me. And I wasn't, I'm not that big. I mean, at the time, I weighed 140 pounds and five foot nine. Um, and uh, he said, please sit down. And I did. And his first question to me was, uh, how long have you wanted to be a woman? Now, there, there's a... An intelligent question, isn't it, for a gay guy who's uh, definitely just gay? Uh, and I, you know, I don't have any gender dysphoria, or I didn't have a beard then, obviously. So maybe I, I looked more like a woman. I don't know to him, but uh, I said I don't want to be. A, I don't, I've never wanted to be a woman. I, you know, I'm happy being a, a, you know, whatever I said. And then he proceeded to ask me. Uh, very interrogative kind of questions. Who have you been with on campus? Have you had sex with people on campus? I said, yes. He said, who have they been? I said, I'm not telling 
and this went on for a while anyway. I don't remember how, how, the, how it actually ended, but he had told me that I needed to leave, uh, uh, pack up and leave that day. So, uh, as you might, this was a, so sometime early uh, 1978, just after Christmas break. Don't really remember when. Oh, something I forgot. I kind of did not do very well academically the first semester. But uh, anyway, that is because I was doing other things, right? Anyway, so so I had a uh, turquoise blue uh, Ford um, 1965 Ford Galaxy 500, my first car, actually, uh, that I bought for $300, oh, whatever I did before then. Anyway, so I packed everything up into my uh, my Galaxy, uh, my turquoise four-door Galaxy 500, which I should have another picture of that at the, on the intro uh, that you saw. You wonder what those pictures were. That, that's, what, that's what one of them was. And I remember being very distraught, uh, crying, and uh, profusely. And uh, anyway, I started heading north. Um, you know, <laughs> that's what you do, right? I'm in uh, L.A. I'm going to go to San Francisco. And um, anyway, I was pretty upset. And a while after this, and I won't go into that part of a story because I'm already 16 minutes in, and I'm sure none of you have actually watched all this. So I, I found out a few months later that there was a story of the uh, Biola newspaper, uh, the Chimes, uh, the next uh, month or right afterwards or every week, I don't know. And the, the headline, I don't know how big it was, uh, was, have you heard about the scandal at Biola? And uh, I guess that was me. So if any of you are from Biola and can, can, can look at the Chimes, 1978, I never saw it, so I'm not sure it was a big headline. I assumed it was like, Japanese attack Pearl Harbor size. It could have been a little, you know, little column. I don't know. But uh, if, you ever, if you ever find that paper uh, or find it and, and they talk about the scandal, that's me. Yay. Anyway, that's all. Oh, 17 and a half minutes. Nobody's going to have watched this. I tell you, if you do watch this all the way through, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, that's it. A thumbs up. A subscribe if you don't already. I'll have more sp story times. Uh, and uh, they get weirder, believe it or not. Anyway, until next time, uh, have fun. Bye. <laughs>